Hiya, it's Davin here at brewbits.com. Behind the camera we've got James, say hello James. Okay, today I thought we would brew up some black currant wine. It's been a fantastic year and we've got absolutely bucket loads. So what better thing to do than to make an adult equivalent of Ribena. So what we've got, come and have a look James, we've got three pound of lovely juicy black currants. What else are we going to need then to brew up our wine? Well, we're going to need three pounds of sugar and we're going to need a few other bits and bobs. We're going to need some pectolase, some yeast nutrients, some candom tablets and something to sterilize all the equipment as well as our yeast. And here I'm going to be using an all-purpose red yeast. In the way of equipment, we're going to need a bucket, we're going to need a demijohn, a funnel over here, uh, a jug to measure everything out with, a spoon for stirring, a hydrometer, a thermometer, um, and we're also going to need to use a straining bag. But for now, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take our sterilised bucket, which I sterilised a little bit earlier. We're going to take our three pounds of black currants. And in they go. And now, I've already boiled it. I'm going to put on eight pints of boiling water. Okay. We're now at number eight. So that's eight pints of boiling water gone in. And I'm going to give it a good stir. three pounds of black currants and we've got eight pints of boiling water. I'm now going to put the top on and I'm going to leave this for seven days. I'm not going to touch it for seven days, I'm going to put it into um, just a cool corner and leave it. For you it's only been a few seconds but for me I've had to wait a whole week till it's got to this stage. Come on in James and have a look because our black Currants have been sat in here for a good week now, and it's now ready to strain them off. So, I've already done a little bit of preparation. Here I've got a sparging bag, or you could be using muslin, and I've put some pegs around it to hold it in place. And all we're going to do, and be careful you don't splash this, because this will dye everything, is all we're going to do is just pour it in. Right, I'm going to leave that for a few moments to all drip through. Okay, so it's had a few minutes to drip. Come back to me, James. So all we're going to do is take our pegs off, being careful not to drop it. And it might still be a little bit in there, so if you really like me, give it a squeeze, get all that lovely juice out. Sweet. Now I'll do for the moment. And into a bucket. Let me just swirl my hands off. All we're going to do now is we're going to take our three pounds of sugar and we're going to pour it into. Oh, sorry, James. Hope that didn't get the camera. And then our three pounds of sugar goes. Now we're going to spend the next few minutes gently stirring. Can you hear that gritty sound that's coming through? You also feel it as you're stirring. You want to keep stirring and keep stirring until you no longer hear that gritty sound and no longer feel any grittiness. Then you know all the sugar's dissolved. I finished stirring the black currant juice and dissolved all the sugar into it. So I've now taken a sample in our trial jar so I can check the specific gravity. 
This is going to tell us effectively how much sugar is in the liquid and it's going to be able to tell us when we then check it again at the end how much alcohol we've got. So my specific gravity is coming out at 1.100 at the moment and of course we don't want to waste any of this. Give my hydrometer a quick swill off. And back in that goes. So what do we do next? Well, we need to add something called peptolase or peptic enzyme, you may see it as. And we need a teaspoon of this. Come on in James, have a look. Good rounded teaspoon. And you use one of these per gallon. And it's just a white powder. So what does peptic enzyme or peptolase do? Well, because we've used boiling water on it, the fruit could have released some pectin. And the trouble with pectin is when it comes to clearing the wine, and so we end up with a nice clear wine ready to drink, well, pectin causes a haze. And that haze, there's no way to get rid of it, and it makes the wine really murky. So we add the pectolase now, or a peptic enzyme now, and that helps prevent the pectin haze at the end. Right, now that's stirred in, we're gonna move on to our yeast nutrient. And here I use vitamin B1 tablets. And basically, there are two little tablets. Come in and have a look, James. And all you do is I crush them up. And to do that, you put them in between two teaspoons, give a little wiggle, and they're crushed. And in that case, just a bit like you and me, really, we all need our vitamins uh, to keep healthy. And that vitamin B1 nutrient is gonna help keep our yeast nice and healthy. Get our yeast doing as much work as they can. Okay, last thing to add is our yeast. And here I'm using a sachet of all-purpose red wine yeast. And again, in this case, just sprinkle it on the top. And guess what? We're gonna give this a good stir in it. is that. What we need to do now, take our lid, just press it down two sides because what's going to happen now is this is going to go into our warm cupboard at about 20 degrees. Always handy to uh, keep the thermometer around so you can see it's about 20 degrees and then uh, we're going to leave that uh, for a week. However what we're going to do for the first three days is we're going to go in, we're going to take the top off and we're going to stir it. So for each of the first three days that it's in the warm cupboard, we need to take the top off and give it a quick stir. After that, put the lid back on like you've seen me do and leave it till it's had one week in total. Seven days since we put our wine into our warm cupboard. And of course, remember to stir for the first three days and then for the last four days, we let it do its thing. So it's finished doing its thing. Come on, have a quick look, James. Get your, uh, get your camera right in. Gorgeous red, beautiful color. Nice dark red. So what we now need, we now need our siphon. This is just a simple siphon. It's got a little end on here. Can you have a look at that, James? This does pop off. And that pops back on. What that helps us to do in the bottom of here now is gonna be some sediment. And uh, the Basically, this is a sediment trap which helps prevent getting any sediment into the next part, which is our demijohn. So, what we're going to do is we're going to siphon the wine, because it's uh, now wine, out of our bucket into our demijohn. And all we do, come on James, come have a look at this. We're going to drop that just in. We don't want to put it down too far because we don't want to disturb the sediment at the bottom. And what we do at this end, we give a good suck. And we'll get a nice load of fluid inside. And all we do, nice and gently, in it goes. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yay, right. 
siphoning's going. Okay. Right guys, so what we want to do is we want to bring it up to just the top of the neck here. And then it's coming up now, almost there. And there we are, exactly where we want it. Okay. Still a little bit left in my tubes. But we'll sort that out later. Okay. So as you can see, James, come on in, have a look. That's to where we filled it. And you can already start seeing the bubbles fermenting going through as it is. The last thing to do today is to prepare our airlock. And we need a bung with a hole in it, and we need our airlock. Come on in, James, have a look at this. Because in the bottom of the airlock, I've got a fluid here, and that's uh, a sodium metabisulfate solution. And what we do, first of all, is we push the airlock into the bung, now this sodium metabisulfate solution is going to help prevent any bugs or bacteria or anything like that getting in and spoiling our wine. But what it's also going to do is the carbon dioxide that's left off, left off by the yeast in the wine is going to push its way through here and it's going to bubble. That's going to be a, a way for us to tell once the wine has finished fermenting because you'll see no more bubbles bubbling through. At that point, over the next three days, test it with your hydrometer and make sure the specific gravity stays the same. As soon as you've got a specific gravity that stays the same for three days, it's then time to rack this off into a nice clean demijohn and start the clearing process. You can find that in one of our other videos, but for now, this needs to go back into a warm cupboard, 20 degrees for about the next two weeks. Might be a little bit shorter, might be a little bit longer, but hopefully in about two weeks-ish, you'll see no more bubbles come through, test it with your hydrometer, and then get to rack off. Once you've finished racking off, and it's all nice and clear, you can bottle. And then once it's been in the bottle for about six months, you'll be ready to drink. Go on in, James, have a good look at that gorgeous color. Isn't it beautiful and red? That's gonna be a beautiful dark red wine. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.